Hey everybody, I'm Alex Dykes out here in Denmark on assignment for TFL Car and we're taking a look at the Porsche Taycan today. We're going to be talking about charging. If you want to know all the details about the Taycan, stay tuned because we will have a number of videos on this vehicle coming up very, very soon, including a full drive review on the 24th of September, Tuesday, so be sure and set your alarm clocks for that. The Taycan has a 9.6 kilowatt onboard charger. That, in theory, could take this battery from completely empty to completely full in about nine and a half hours or so. But the more typical measure is 5% to 80%. That would take this vehicle about seven hours. Now, if you have access to an older style 50 kilowatt charging station, like this one right behind me right here, that would take this battery from 5% to 80% in 93 minutes. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about crazy fast charging rates. So perhaps the biggest news for the Taycan is the fast DC fast charge rate. This will be able to charge at up to 270 kilowatts. For those that aren't really familiar with how much a kilowatt is, that's the equivalent of 55 average American homes in Florida on Thanksgiving with the air conditioning on, baking a turkey in their oven. This is a ton of power, and this is significantly faster than any current generation Tesla. So we're gonna go ahead and start the charging here and see exactly how fast we can go. It's worth noting that there are two different charge ports on the Taycan. We have one over here on the passenger side and then an AC only charge connector on the other side. While we wait for the authentication to complete, you should know that like every other EV out there, actual charge rate will depend on a wide variety of factors. The uh, state of charge of the battery, how hot the battery is or how cold the battery is, etc. But the Taycan is able to precondition the battery as you approach the DC fast charge station to help give you that faster rate of charge. Now the faster rates of charge will only happen at the bottom end of the battery. So as you're going from say 0% or 5% on up to about 80%, that's where you're going to get the fastest charge possible. And charging has just begun here. It's a little bit difficult to see with the glare here, but as you can see, the battery is now at about 8%, now 9% state of charge. We're going extremely quickly, 196 kilowatts now. Now at the moment, it is a little bit chilly out here. It's about 55 degrees or so Fahrenheit. So the battery is not gonna be able to charge at its maximum rate. We'll see how high we can go though. Now the reason that the Taycan is able to charge this quickly is that you can see we have an 800 volt charging system. Right now it's operating at about 736 volts right there. That's about double the Chatmo standard and double the other SAE combo connector standards. By doubling the voltage, we drop the current down in half. So you can see it's only 260 amps right there. That reduces the size of the conductors required, helps keep them from overheating, that sort of thing. The battery when we started our charge was well under 30 degrees Celsius. It needs to be about 30 to 33 degrees Celsius in order to get the fastest charge possible. Now I know what you're thinking, 196 kilowatts doesn't sound as fast as the fast charge rate seen in some Model 3s out there, but keep in mind the same disclaimers apply. So if the Model 3's battery is not cold enough or not warm enough, then it's not gonna be able to charge at those faster rates. And as you can see, things have now bumped up to 249 kilowatts, so we're definitely going in the right direction here charge-wise. Perhaps the more impressive numbers are going on right up here on this side of the screen. As you can see, in about five minutes, we've pulled in more power than the average plug-in hybrid in America can even hold, period. So you can see now that we've hit around 33% state of charge, we end up down there at around 200 kilowatts. So a very similar ramping to most plug-in vehicles out there. But again, the total amount of power here is probably the impressive point. At seven and a half minutes now, we're coming in around 27, 28 kilowatt hours total. And for those of you out there that aren't familiar, first generation Nissan Leafs, first generation Kia Soul EVs, they had a battery pack that was right there around that 28 kilowatt hour nominal capacity. And you can see now that we're at about 38% state of charge, we've dropped down to about 150 kilowatts. The vehicle will then hang out here in this region for a while. And then of course, as we get closer to 100%, it's gonna start dropping considerably faster. A lot of folks don't really realize this, but in many EVs out there to go from 80 or 90% state of charge all the way to 100% state of charge, it's not necessarily gonna be any faster to be connected to a DC fast charge station at that point. You may actually get the same overall charging rate connected to your average AC level two outlet.
So now that we're coming in right around 21 and a half minutes here, you can see that we're at about almost 64 kilowatt hours of power. For the record, that's around what you can put in a Leaf Plus, a Kona, or a Nero EV total. And talking about those other alternatives, you can see that we're still charging considerably faster than most of those other EVs out there. Even though the battery is at around 75% capacity, we're still charging at 117 kilowatts. So you can see now that we have hit 80% state of charge in just over 24 minutes. Now that is again a little bit slower than Porsche was claiming, but that's because we were not able to hit that maximum charge rate immediately. The battery was not warm enough in order to support that fast rate of charge right away. But you can still see this is still incredibly impressive. So now the battery charge is going down to about 84 kilowatts is what the battery is accepting right now. We're at that 80% mark right there. And we'll continue to see that drop as the battery continues to charge. We've now put 70 kilowatt hours approximately into the battery, which is an awful lot. And for the record, that's almost what you'll get in the average Tesla out there. The average Tesla out there has about a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now that said, of course, remember that the Model S and Model X are available with an even bigger battery pack up to 100 kilowatt hours. And there you go, we were successfully able to take this battery from about 4.5%, 5% or so up to 85% in just about 30 minutes. Now we barely missed that 22 and a half minute window that Porsche claims because the battery was a little bit too cold. Again, as with any EV out there, charge rates depend on a variety of different factors, battery state of charge, battery temperature, etc. So this one wasn't able to hit that fast 270 kilowatt rate, but it did get very, very close and it did that 5% to 80% jump in about 24 minutes or so. So we're only about two minutes off. According to Porsche, the reason that this doesn't take that much longer when you connect this to an older 400 volt style charger is because after about 40% state of charge, both systems are gonna be delivering only about 150 kilowatts. Now, why can't batteries go any faster? Well, it's all a chemistry thing and a cooling thing. You have to be able to cool the battery. You have to be able to cool the charging cables. Those charging cables are actively cooled. And then, of course, you have to make sure that the battery doesn't catch on fire or anything like that. So that's why charging limits are rated to where they are right now. Again, if you want to know more about the Taycan, stay tuned because we will be back on the 24th with a complete drive review so you can see this vehicle go 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. If you haven't already done so, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen and be sure and head over to tflcar.com for news and full reviews, of course.